When a raindrop falls here, it either flows north into Canada or south into the U.S. This ridge line is the border. My girlfriend and I have come to find the source of the Connecticut River. We're told it rises in a small pond just inside the United States. Oh, it's so quiet. These are the headwaters of the Connecticut River. And they smell, too. <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> and that's a beaver. There's a beaver dam. Uh, beaver house. Where's that? Lodge oh, I see. Over there. I see. <laughs> I'm restless like water myself, eager to journey from here to the ocean. I'm going to take a sample from this tiny stream and carry it to the river's mouth. A symbolic gesture, an excuse to travel down the river through a beautiful New England autumn. The Connecticut River starts in a series of four lakes. This is where my journey begins. This canoe is made from the bark of a birch tree, the way Indians made them. Rini won't be coming with me. I'm traveling alone, except for the video camera I'm using to document my trip, and for a small film crew that will occasionally meet up with me along the way. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Sam. There you go. I don't expect to see Rini and Sam again until I reach the mouth of the river five weeks from now. I grew up dreaming over maps. The farther away the territory, the more enticing it looked. But now I'm older and I've had the chance to travel, cross some borders. Now my focus has shifted closer to home. I was born in New England I grew up here. I wondered if there was anything left of those flinty, cold roast Yankees who settled the valley. If not, who has taken their place? I'm pretty sure there are no Indians left. Here near the headwaters, it's hard to believe the Connecticut River was once notorious for its pollution. I've heard it's cleaner now, but I wanted to see for myself. What better way than to travel down the river slowly, camping out, asking questions. It'll take a couple of days to paddle through the lakes at the top of the river. From there, it's 400 miles to the sea. The Connecticut is the longest river in New England. The upper section forms the border between the states of Vermont and New Hampshire. It then flows through western Massachusetts and Connecticut, emptying into Long Island Sound. On the map, it looked like an easy journey, all downstream. I thought it would be a lark. They say that there are good trout in this lake. And this is what I catch them with. <laughs> it's called a hornberg. And it's a good all-round fly for catching uh, trout, maybe even a salmon. Mm. Oh, and I have it. Actually, it's easier to catch canoes and people. And that's what I've done here. Mm, God. I love to fish. 30 years ago, there were hardly any good fish left in the Connecticut. I've read that they are now trying to bring them back, trout and salmon, and spent millions of dollars in the effort. I hope I can catch one. After all, some of those millions are my tax dollars, too. <laughs> 